interesting stuff. I, I'd love to hear about your thoughts on what's happening in the space, um, in Polkadot, Kusama specifically, over the next, let's say, year or so. What what are you anticipating? What are you, you know, you had touched on the launching of these parachains. Is that supposed to be happening soon? Tell me a little bit about the future of, of Polkadot, Kusama. Yeah, uh, right. So we, I mentioned Rococo, the test net for parachains has been uh, launched in the last month and they are on, we're slowly onboarding each of the parachain teams. I think we have about... 15 of them or so, 15 or 20 that have, um, uh, that have already got their, 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 their stuff together, their, their software, their, their parachain, uh, and they're ready to uh, put, put it onto, um, onto the, the, the test net, onto Rococo. Uh, once we're happy that that code is running reasonably smoothly, uh, then we will roll it out onto Kusama, um, alongside, of course, the Kusama auctions uh so the, the the these these slot auctions and the crowd loaning uh system so that people uh, across the kusama stakeholding ecosystem can back uh their favorite parachains and maybe reap some of the rewards that the parachain teams are offering them for their backing um so uh that's that's probably coming in the next month or two uh once we're happy that kusama has it, it, everything's working as we expect in kusama and once the external audit is completed we have a, an external audit firm on retainer that's just basically churning through all of this new code as we develop it um once they're happy that this is uh safe and secure then we will be uh, deploying it onto Polkadot. um our uh, tentative goal for that is by the end of this quarter. So uh, fingers crossed that, that that comes through. Um, once that is done, uh, there will be an initial version of XCMP, this cross-chain message passing uh, protocol. So this is uh, the way that these parachains can send messages to each other, communicate, as I mentioned, like every six seconds, they, they can sort of send messages. Um, and that will be also uh, uh, within this first delivery, this first scope of delivery at the end of Q1, hopefully. And then uh, over this uh, first half of the year, we'll be optimizing this XCMP into a, a, a more or less off-chain version of it, which basically dramatically increases the efficiency, increases the number of messages that they can send to each other, decreases any of the costs associated with it and so on. Uh, there are a few additional technologies. Uh, one of them is called Spree. This is a very exciting technology. Um, it stands for um, Secure Protected Runtime Execution Enclaves. And what it basically means is that uh, you can have little programs that run inside these parachains um, and they all run separately. Right, so you've got they all run with the parachain in parallel to each other. So, like you can imagine, a hundred copies of this program all running uh, within the scope of the parachain, uh, but it's the same program. So it's sort of like the best of both worlds. You get um, heterogeneous domain-specific, you know, industry-specific uh, blockchain sharding, but you also get a little bit of the computer program in the shard that is the same across all the shards. So it can do things like handle token balances and it can send things like same tokens or assets between the shards with a guarantee that the code on the other side of the message is gonna execute correctly, execute as you imagine. So um, in token, very simple execution, you know, reduce the balance of one account, increase the balance of another account by the same amount, very simple sort of transfer operation. But we can imagine there might be a few more of these different little snippets of code um, that have their own uh, protected storage associated with them so they can maintain the balances. And this is very important so that uh, parachains that don't trust each other's logic they might trust that whatever their logic is is executed correctly by Polkadot because they all run under the same validator umbrella. But they don't necessarily trust that the logic itself is doing what they expect it to do. That when they send a, hey, transfer this asset, please, that it's actually going to reduce the balance or, of, of one account and increase of another. Now, um, what uh, and so what Spree does is it gives them that guarantee. It allows the best of both worlds, both your expect, uh, homogenous sharding and your heterogeneous sharding. And we expect that in, in the near future. When when do you expect the spree to come? Uh, that I expect to land. Uh, ooh, finger in the air. Um, Q three, I would say probably Q three this year. And so, but do you imagine that most of the fruits of your labor will be going by the end of this year, right? Like, so you're saying this, the spree thing, you're talking about all these parachains. I mean, do you expect to see lots of, do you expect to see DeFi basically uh, existing on Polkadot by the end of the year? Yeah, I would hope so. 
Um, I mean, there's already plenty of DeFi chains, and we've got some amazing teams, some really great talent out there developing parachains. The great thing is that, you know, I mean, for me, it's out of my hands. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. our job here is to develop Polkadot and deliver parachains and make it as efficient and stable as possible. Um, and, you know, uh, it might be that when that's done, that we, we sort of start playing around and developing a few parachains of our own and, and maybe developing some of the core technology of parachains. But basically, uh, our job is to deliver is to deliver Polkadot and as an application uh, platform. And it's, 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 it's our wonderful ecosystem of, I don't know, I think I last read about 340 projects and counting um, that are developing, that are, de that are developing um, the, the layer ones, right? These platforms so polkadot's a platform of platform yeah our platforms themselves um that are um providing um you know the 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 infrastructure for doing things like um decentralized finance and supply chain and registry tracking and uh, nfts and all this crazy uh crazy imagine uh, crazily imagined stuff uh, that's going to sort of um uh, some of which is going to be really world changing and so yeah, um, it, it's great, and I have a I have a huge amount of confidence in in, in many of these teams. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? Any any last things you'd like to say to the audience about uh, Polkadot or how you see the future, the ecosystem in general? I think we're, we're sort of in an interesting time for the ecosystem, particularly with with uh, with Polkadot. I mean, obviously, my, most of my time and efforts have been focused on Polkadot. Uh, it's uh, it's rare that I actually get a chance to look up and look around and see what what the rest of the world is doing, and that's even more so in the last year with uh, you know no conferences and all the rest of it. Uh, but I, I do think it's uh, it, it's really a, a great time to be in this ecosystem. I think we are. Um, sort of entering blockchain 3.0 um, uh, slowly but surely. Um, and I, I think uh, it's important to look behind, um, you know, the the claims um, to work out where the sort of true actors in this golden age are uh, and, and who are the sort of maybe the ones that didn't quite make it into blockchain 3.0 and are still at 2.5. Because I, th I, think, uh, I think on the face of it, it's not always so easy to distinguish. Um, so it's really important to... Um, you know, if you're trying to make any kind of uh, uh, judgment and evaluation, it's really important to get a proper um, sort of developer-led technical evaluation of where the protocol is at, um, and maybe also a sort of proper game theoretic um, evaluation of what the protocol does, um, and not not buy too much into uh, a lot of this, uh, you know, sort of hype surrounding it. And the only other thing I'd say is, you know. Be aware of the distinction, the difference between um, evolution and revolution. Uh, I know, uh, you know, as as having done Ethereum, you know, we we brought a sort of new kind of architecture into the world with Ethereum. This idea of the Ethereum virtual machine, the idea of smart contracts, um, and uh, you know, uh, you know, proud as I am uh, about that, it is ultimately uh, it's technology that's now six, seven years old. Uh, and um, we're still seeing blockchains um, sticking to the architecture, sticking to this, you know, very um, sort of uh, smart contract, gas consuming, um, dynamically metered um, architecture that we introduced in Ethereum way back then. So um, that's all very well. And you will see evolution on that. You will see people um, improving performance. You will see some some changes to things like transaction propagation, just trying to eke out that, that sort of uh, improved um, uh, level of transaction throughput but ultimately if it's using the same architecture it's probably not going to be a revolutionary um, difference in uh, a revolutionary innovation and you've got to look beyond um, that architecture to really find the gems in this uh, golden age